doing a work that have eternal good reward. We understand that everything we are doing on earth has eternal reward. Amen. Everything we are doing on earth has eternal reward. But that is why I decided to title it Doing a Work That Has Eternal Good Reward. We know that the sinner reward is hellfire. That the Lord is going to reward every man. God is going to reward every individual. God will reward the righteous. God will also reward the wicked. So both wicked and the righteous has eternal reward. Amen? But we are talking about eternal good reward. We are talking about good reward. Not anyhow reward. We know that hellfire is a reward. We know that heaven is a reward. We understand that hellfire is what? And a work. Amen. Amen. So today we are talking about doing a work that has eternal good reward. Praise God. I understand that one day all this our noise will come to an end. Everything we are doing on earth now is noise making. Everything is noise. On the last day, I understand that very soon our noise will come to an end. Our noise will be silent. God is going to silence our noise. All these greatest man of God, the greatest church, the largest church in the whole world, the largest congregation, the richest pastor, the richest man and richest woman. I understand there is a day that is coming, our noise will be over. Praise God. Our noise will be over. Hallelujah. So because of that, when our noise will be over, the Lord Almighty is going to stand. By that time, there is nothing like your car anymore. There is nothing like your uh, 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 sheep anymore. There is nothing like, uh, uh, what would I call it? There is nothing like the, your congregation anymore. There is nothing like your richest uh, uh, pastor or richest man of God anymore. Amen. The Lord is going to silence the whole noise. Everybody is going to stand before God to receive that reward. Praise God. Everyone on earth has eternal reward. Whatever we are doing on earth is work. Anything we are doing on earth is what? Is work. And all of them has a reward in cash. All of them has a reward. The Bible makes us understand that on the last day, the Lord is going to resurrect everyone. Both the wicked and the righteous. But the righteous will have eternal reward. They will receive their reward from the Lord. And the wicked will also receive their own reward from the Lord. But I pray that someone here, your reward will be good. In the name of Jesus. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 11 to 14. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hair, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is because the day we bring it to life, it will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. The fire will test the quality of each person's work, if what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive what? Reward. So, the Bible makes us to understand that everything we are doing shall be reviewed on the last day by fire. The Lord will test all our works. All our works will pass through fire. The, all our works will pass through fire. And the Bible makes us to understand that any person's work 
that after passing the fire, the work still remain with the seed of the world. So these ones are the ones that are going to receive good reward from the Lord. Our works on earth is like uh, uh, the Bible made this to understand that Christ is the foundation. And everybody can build anything he likes to build on that foundation, no problem. We can see, the Bible said there is no any other foundation that will be laid except that which has been already laid, which is Christ. So now, everybody can build anything. The Bible began to tell us, somebody, if you can, if you like, you can choose to, be, to build gold. Amen? If you like, you can choose to build with silver on that particular place. You can choose to build with gold on that foundation. If you are going to explain the meaning of all these things, gold, silver, uh, uh, precious stones, amen. So now, number one, the Bible says that anybody, if you like, you can build anything you like on it. Like there are many people today, they can use the name of the Lord and deceive people. They are building something on that foundation, amen. There are some people today, they can deceive other people, they can prophesy lies. That anything you are building, anything you like, you do what? You build on it. The Lord is not stopping anybody from building anything. You can build anything you like on it. But the Lord told us that whatsoever you are building shall be revealed by fire on the last day. And the Bible told us that only the one that survived will receive reward from the Lord. Praise God. So now, we now begin to understand that that place you can use the name of Christ to build anything you like. Praise God. There are many people today, they are no longer remembering hellfire. They are no longer remembering heaven. They are just focused on prosperity. You know, in the Bible, you see that God can prosper. So some people now, they condition them only for prosperity. Secret of prosperity. Laws of prosperity. The mystery of prosperity. How to get wealth. How to be wealthy. And it's working because they are building it on Christ. You know? But on the last day, the Lord shall pass all our works through fire. Praise God. I am praying that that day, that your work shall survive. Your work shall prevail in the name of Jesus. I pray for someone here, in the name of Jesus, that your work will survive. In Jesus' name. So now, Bible said that some are building on gold. Some are building with gold. Praise God. Building with gold means... That someone now, you are building with gold. For instance, you are living a righteous life. You are doing exactly what God wants. You are operating according to the will of God. You are doing the assignment God sent you. You are living a glorious life, the life of righteousness. That individual is building on gold. So on the last day, the Lord will, will bring all our works and pass them through fire. That person's work will survive. Fire cannot burn that works. You understand that the more you, you pass gold through fire, the more that gold will shine. The more you pass gold through fire, the more the gold will shine. So that person's work, that day Christ will come. That person's work will be passed through fire and the work will shine more. Amen? For the people that build with wood, you can build with wood. Uh, and when the Lord puts your work into fire, do you know what will happen? It will burn. You can build with the head, aggregate, you can build with it. When you put fire on that head, what will happen? You can, you can, so the only thing that can survive it is gold. So every one of us should know that our work has a eternal reward. Our works have what? Eternal reward. Let us not be carried away by the deception of devil this end time. All our work will be, will be tested by fire. And I said that very soon, one day, one day, one day, all our noise will cease. Everything that happening in the church these days is noise. All the things you are seeing now, oh, that day, you see all the people that are falling down and rising, all the miracle workers, all the largest congregation, all the richest men of God, the man that have the richest money, the richest crowd, the richest billionaire, that day, everybody will give the same. No riches, nothing, nothing. So no more congregation, no more, uh, no more congregation, nothing, nothing, nothing. We deceive ourselves anymore. 
All of us will stand like this. Our house is not there anymore. Our jeep is not there anymore. Our land cruiser is no more there. Our jeep, our private jet is no more there. All our personalities, no, nothing, nothing. And we will not stand. That day, our minds have ceased. So we should not forget that day that is coming. Amen. All our service on earth, all the service on earth has a reward from the Lord. The Bible said that God is a, is a consuming fire. The Bible told us that our God is what? Is a consuming fire. And because our God is a consuming fire, everything that comes before him will pass through that fire. You know, when anything comes before fire, if you experience burning, if you experience what? Burning. Anything you bring through fire, because our God is a consuming fire. That is why the Bible said that all our works shall pass through fire. Because God is going to bring all of them, they will meet the fire himself. So they will pass through fire. So God will shake it. When God is shaking it, you know what will happen? Fire is burning those things. Hallelujah. On the last day, many people will discover that they did nothing on earth. They will just weep, but it's too late. They will discover that all the honors and the fame on the everything, how people recognize them, is totally different from what God is seeing them. They will discover that their life and everything about them is totally different from a true reality. Before God, who we are before God is true reality. Who we are before men is deception. The deception. So now we cannot try to be getting the, the applaud of men. We will not we, we, we must cease from trying to get the applaud of men. Trying to get the, the uh, congregation, uh, congratulations of men. Try to get the approval of men. We must level in such a way that God Himself will approve us. Somebody say Amen. As we know, that is the day of all this noise here and there will come to an end. All this noise here and there will come to an end on that day. All this noise will come to an end. When you look at some minutes these days, you discover many ministries noise. Everywhere noise. Everybody say that God is using him. That they will know the person God is using. Everybody said that he's called by God. That they will know who that God by God. Everybody pretend in the church that they will know through born and dead. Uh, all, all, all the noise, everything in this life man is noise making. The day of true reality is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Let's put it over here. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. The Bible said, the Bible said, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due to for what is due us for the things done why in the body, whether good or bad. Now, as I told us that I understand that every man has a eternal reward. But there are good reward and there is also bad reward. And this Bible verse is telling us that everyone, both sinners and righteous, will receive reward that day. But we know that the reward of the righteous will not be the same as the reward of the wicked. So the wicked has eternal reward, which is hellfire. And the righteous has eternal reward, which is what? Heaven. So now, this kind of place is where they will live forever. And we must all understand that this place is waiting for us. Hellfire or heaven. Praise God. May we never be carried away by noise that is going on in this end time. May we be delivered from noise that is going on these days in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So now, every one of us will stand before God. Me, I will stand. You, you will stand. And everybody will receive his reward from the Lord. That day we will know whose reward is better. That day we will know who is who. That day we will know the secret of men. Because everything we do in a secret shall be revealed that day. All the things we are doing, all our lifestyle, all our life, all the things we are doing shall be judged on that day. Remember our message, doing a work that has eternal good reward. Doing a work that has eternal good reward. Doing a work that has eternal good reward. 
a word that on that day the Lord will say, Well done, go down faithful servant. There are people that will receive that congratulations from the Lord. May it be you and I. Hallelujah. The Lord will say, Well done, go down faithful servant. Immediately you receive that reward, that congratulation. Well done, O thou faithful servant. You know that you have a good reward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We all shall stand to receive our reward from God. What shall be your reward on that day? What shall be your reward on that day? We all shall stand to receive our reward from the Lord. Then what shall be your reward? You are the one to determine what your reward will be. Your enemy cannot determine it for you. Even your best friend cannot determine it for you. Your pastor cannot determine it for you. Your mother cannot determine it for you. You are the one to determine what kind of reward you need. As we know that nobody, who, no farmer that plants yam, will ever expect to harvest cassava on the last day, on the day of harvest. We must also understand there is no farmer that plants corn that will ever, even by miracle or by power, ever harvest two parts of yam on the day of harvest. The Lord is the God of increase. Is the God that said, I will sow you by your soul, you shall reap. So now, it is you that will determine the kind of reward you will receive from the Lord. And when you make up your mind, you want to receive a good reward. You want to receive that congratulation from the Lord. You want to receive that, that congratulation that says, well done. O thou faithful servant, you have to do what? You have to labor in the word of righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 13, verse 41. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. And the Bible makes us to understand when you read this verse, in the, when you read this in the King James translation, it said that the Son of God, Son of Man, we send his angel to four corners of the world. They will do what? Gather everything. Amen? They will gather everything. They will gather everybody. They will gather every soul. They will gather every ministry. They will gather every pastor. They will gather everything. The Son of Man will send his angel. They will gather all of them. The day of accountability, the day of results in our primary school, we all shall write anything you like. Anything you like, you write. There are some people, evil people call them witty. It's impossible. They write anything they like. They do anything they like, no problem. But after that, we pass our exam. The, 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 the marker, the teacher will mark it. But there is no particular day they will say, oh, today they will call it up. Do you, do you not do that in your school days? They say they will call it up. All students, everybody will gather together. Whether you are in primary one, primary two, primary three, two primary six, you will not no class that day. And the Lord will do that on the last day. Yeah? God will do that. That is why Bible says that God will get, send his angels to gather all men. Pastor, your general pastor will stand like this. You stand. They have, God has gathered all of us. Amen. You understand what I mean? And in that day, the, our teacher will begin to talk. Hey, everybody will begin to do it. Hey. Hey, nobody will know his position that day. It's the day of result. And they will call some people and say, hey. They will call some people. Woo! See them. Woo! When they call first, ah! the kind of honor, even teacher and student will give to that person that have first class. Amen. And the Bible says, it's the day of result. Praise God. Let me ask you a question. Your work on earth, what kind of reward will he attract before God on that day? Because it's a, something that is a personal decision. It's something that you yourself determine. You can decide, I want to do a work that will bring a, that will bring a eternal good reward. I want to do a work that will bring eternal good reward. Nobody can force you Nobody can do it for you. Praise God. Praise God. Don't be deceived. 
by the noise that is happening here and there. Don't be deceived. We understand that Jesus said that on the last day that he will say to people, go behind me for I don't know you. And they will say, Master, for you will teach in our street, you know, we buy your bonds that day with go. Uh -uh. That day you are doing evangelism, you remember I bought more for you. Uh, I bought more to now for you. With Gala. You don't remember me. And Jesus will say, I don't know you. Why? What made Jesus not know them? Because their result, their result makes Jesus not to know them. Hallelujah. And if we, the church, this end time church is not careful, we will be carried away by noise. When you have a drum that is filled with water, and you have another empty drum, which one make noise pass? Empty. Eh? Empty. 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 So empty drum make noise more. And there are many churches today, many ministries today, many organizations today, many gatherings of children of God today, that before God is what? Empty drum. But they make so noise in the world. They cause so noise in the world. And we should not be carried away by their noise. Let the Lord help us in Jesus' name. We must understand that all our works on earth will be judged on the last day. Don't forget that one. Another thing to bear in mind. Jesus said in the book of John, Gospel of John chapter 19. Sorry, Gospel of John chapter 17. Gospel of John chapter 17. Look at what Jesus said from verse 1. After Jesus said this, Jesus looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son may glorify your name. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those who have given him. Who all those you have given him that you may give eternal life to all those you have given him. Yeah. Now this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Look at this form. I have brought you glory on earth. Look at that kind of work we are talking about now. You see the kind of work we are talking about. I have brought you glory on earth. By finishing the work you gave me to do. I have brought you glory on earth. By finishing the work. By finishing what? The work. the work. When you look very well, you discover that it is one personal thing. Man have one purpose. Look at it very well. Now that, that, that work is not S. There is not S there, it's not plural. Is it plural in your Bible? It's a single word. The singular. So it is work, not works. It is what? Work, not work. Works. So every man has one purpose on earth. And what is the purpose Christ came to do? He came to die on the cross. And when Jesus knew he had finished everything he's supposed to do that will lead him to that place to die. So one thing that remains, you when you check, this is the prayer that Christ prayed. This was the last prayer he prayed for his disciples before he was crucified. Amen. He said, I have finished the work you sent me to do. He did a good work that will have a good eternal reward. Paul also was another man that finished his work. Paul said that day, my, I have finished my course. I have run my race. I am now waiting for the glory the Lord will give to me on that day. He said, not only me will the Lord give that crown of glory, but to all that will also finish their work. Somebody say amen. amen. So these people are not, they, they, they are not carried away by the noise of the world. Look at another man called Daniel. Daniel finished his works on earth. And that is why we remember that Daniel was relevant in the kingdom. He was in earthly government. The Lord placed him in earthly government and he was righteous. For complete 65 years, he was still relevant in the care of God. Amen? Amen. And before Daniel died, the Lord sent angel to come and tell Daniel to prepare that he's coming home. Amen? These are the people that have been in the war. The angel of the Lord appeared to Daniel and said, you will rest in peace. Yeah? You are about to return home. 
Praise God. So this man has finished his work. Look at Paul. Paul who said, I am about to be poured out as an offering. And then he said, I have finished everything I come to do. I'm about to be poured out. I'm about to die. Because when a man finishes his assignment on earth, there is no need of that man living here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you know why John the Baptist had to give way? Do you know why John the Baptist had to die? That even God will not save him. Amen. Because John prophesied and said he was a baptizer. He was the first baptizer. But the true baptizer, which is Christ, is coming. There will be no true baptizer now. Oh, no. And the John said, I will decrease. Why he do what? He increase. So when Christ came, John had to decrease. How will he decrease? By death. And immediately that Jesus came, you discover John was arrested. Uh, John was arrested. After John introduced Jesus to people, John was arrested. By the power of God, he was arrested. <laughs> and the John, they were experiencing, expecting deliverance. John said, I will decree, but Christ will do what? And that is why when John was in the prison, John said, go and tell him, is he not the one to come? Or shall we expect another? John was expecting that Christ would come and deliver him. And even Christ knew that John has finished his work. He left him to die here. <laughs> what made you to be alive on earth is because of purpose. Yes, so a man that living a life without purpose is like a man inside mortuary. Yes, it's a dead man. The, the, the difference between a dead people in mortuary and someone that is still alive is purpose. When a man has no purpose, there is no difference between a dead man in the mortuary and the man that is living without purpose. He's also dead. Praise God. You understand what I mean? So, sometimes they say Jesus died premature. No, Jesus did not experience premature death. Jesus finished his work. He said, my work, I have finished my assignment. So, when you finish your assignment, what is the purpose of staying? Is there any other reason? No, there is no other reason. We are here in order to fulfill purpose. And once the man fulfills that purpose of coming, the Lord will take it go. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. I have finished the work he sent me to do. That shall be the prayer of someone at the point of death. Amen. That shall be the prayer of somebody here on the day of death. He or she can look up and say, Lord, I have finished the work you sent me to do. The work you sent me to do, I have finished it. May you finish your work in Jesus' name. I told us the, the, the encounter I have with, with an angel of the Lord. He, 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 he began to tell me, the angel of the Lord began to tell me, say there was a woman, when this woman was in the world, the woman was loved by people. The whole world accepted her ministry. Everybody, in fact, the woman was so famous, and the woman used all her heart to do the work with all her strength. But angel of the Lord said to me, and after the woman died, coming up to heaven, angels came out of the heaven outside and blocked her. I said, ah, why? Because I was surprised having a very the testimony of a woman like that. She's not supposed to have the other side of testimony. Amen. And the angel of the Lord said, because this woman did something God did not send her to do, and she abandoned the assignment why God called her. I believe that maybe this woman was carried away by noise. Huh? This woman, maybe when she started the ministry, along the way she was carried away by noise. You know, some people now, when they come to this church now, they want us to be operating like other church. Which we are not in the same line, the same calling. We don't have the same calling. Even prophets, prophets are not the same. When you bring two prophets, they are not operating the same way. They are not. And who are the prophets? Prophets, I said it. Prophets are not people that say, don't say the Lord. Prophets are not people that say, I can see vision, I can see, I can see. Your name is in Kishi. No. Especially only we get prophets that see in our will of ladies. That we get prophets. If we get prophet. Amen. So I begin to see it. The other day I was watching one of them. 
It was just one of them. They brought somebody and said, uh, you, um, I said, you, as I'm talking to you now, you are from your boyfriend's ha house. You know, say, yes. <laughs> as I'm talking to you now, you are wearing seven pants inside. The woman say, yes, sir. Before the church like this, I don't know whether it's church or nightclub. I don't know. Because that kind of place is not church. They're supposed to stay in the Sepanic gathering. Then, so before that place, they called church. Before the altar like this, I was watching the lady on the floor. The lady removed one pant. The lady removed two. The lady removed three. The wife said, hey, wait, wait, wait. People, the lady removed four. They removed five. They removed inside church. On the altar, they removed in the pants inside church. So I'm not talking about that kind of prophet. Hallelujah. So we are talking about prophet. Who are the prophet? That God can send somebody. Look at Jonah. Jonah was a prophet. The Lord sent him to Nineveh. He did not prophesy and said, Don't say the Lord. Yeah? Jonah said what the Lord said to him. So when Jonah went to Nineveh, he said, The Lord said, Place to come, Nineveh shall be destroyed. Praise God. And when they had the word of God from the mouth of Jonah, they repent and give their life to God. Praise God. Praise God. This is their prophet. So when a man comes and presents scripture to you, he's a prophet. As long as it's what the Lord is saying for that moment, as long as it's the message the Lord gave that man to that deliver, he's a prophet. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. So we must understand that. But I understand, as I said, that the day is coming. All our noise we cease. Don't forget the day our noise we cease. All these things, God is the one to judge now. God is the one to say who is the righteous. God is the one to say who is the highest church. I tell you that on the last day, the highest pastor, the wealthiest pastor before God, may be a pastor that have one member. You will see it on the last day. You think, on the last day, the wealthiest pastor, a pastor that do excellently, excellent before God, on the last day, May be a pastor that have one kiosk. Maybe church that is existing inside the room. You know that kind of the church. It may not be this one that we are talking about today. So don't forget that the day is coming. All our noise, we know what? We cease. Amen. I have finished my course. I am now waiting for the reward the Lord will give me. Let this be your mind. Let this kind of a thing be your heart desire in everything you are doing. So you don't need anybody to, 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 to trigger you to do good things. You don't need it. You need to know that you had a reward waiting for you. Oh, the, my reward, the reward I need from the Lord is such a kind of reward. For me, that is the decision that is that my heart desire from the Lord. That is why we keep on running the church the way we are doing it now. Not that we cannot do otherwise. Amen. But there is that desire of my heart. Eh? There is that desire of my heart that somebody close his eyes in death, coming up to heaven, worship some is going on on his behalf. That is a glorious reward. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I want you to look at yourself very well. Look at yourself. As you're looking at yourself, have yeah. you checked yourself on the mirror? If you know you look at Nero today before coming to church, let me see your hand. Women cannot escape this one. Uh -huh. yeah. Hallelujah. I don't know the last time I shared myself on Nero. I saw my face on Nero once again. I said, ah, you see how I look like? <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you know why? Because as, as, I, as Jesus is, that is who I am. So, no need of checking Nero. I am like Jesus. Hallelujah. So now, but I want to say something. The whole you, have you imagined and understand that they pray one particular day, they will just pray coffee. They just package you, they dress your hand like this. You never think about that. Eh? They dress you like this. They hold you. Uh -uh. You'll be coming, you begin to smell. You begin to smell. Lord and water begin to come out of your nose. You begin to smell. You are nobody. Hallelujah. What is man? What is man is the title of that message. What is man? They read the answer question. What is man? But no man can be able to answer that question except Almighty God who created man. So I understand that God 
answer that question of him even before David he asked the question. Because the Lord answered that question in Genesis. When David he asked that question in the book of Psalm chapter 8, verse 4. David he said, What is man, Lord? But Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, the Lord answered the question. The Lord said to Adam and Eve, No are dust and unto dust you shall return. So when you see a, a sister with a nice shape, what does he mean? Nice dust. These dogs have nice shape. So when you see a six and the pointed nose, what does it mean? Pointed nose dust. When you see a sister that is fat or a brother that is fat, what does it mean? Fat dust. When you see a brother that has money, wealthy, a wealthy man, what, what is the name of that man? A wealthy dust. So of all these things. And when you look at life, you discover that man will gather house, man will build house, man will buy cars, man will have shares, man will have many investments. Life is very wicked. And the man will die. They've ordered everything.